In this video, we're going to look at the idea of differentiability and graphing the derivative of a function. Let's get started. So what I want to look at is the difference between these two functions, f of x and g of x. First, let's notice that these two functions have a lot of similarities. Um, this first function increases for a while, and then it decreases for a while, and then it increases for a while. Uh, notice this function does exactly the same thing. It increases, it decreases, and then it increases. And in fact, these two functions have a lot of the same points as well. Okay, So these functions have a lot in common, but I want to take a closer look at the difference between these two functions. So let's look at this first function, and let's try to graph its derivative. Okay, so <clears throat> notice if I start, if I kind of explore this from left to right, uh, we see that the function is increasing, which means the slope of its tangent line is positive. Then it's decreasing, which means the slope of its tangent line is negative. And then it's increasing, which means the slope of its tangent line is positive again. So remember, f prime should be a graph of the slope of the tangent line. Okay, So if we're going to graph this, the easiest thing to do is look at where the slope of the tangent line is zero. In other words, where does the graph of f of x have a horizontal tangent line? And there are two places. Right here we would have a horizontal tangent line, and right here. So at x equals negative 2, the graph of f has a horizontal tangent line which means the slope is 0 at x equals negative 2. So if I'm graphing the slope of the tangent line, it would have a 0 at x equal negative 2. And likewise, it would also have a 0 at x equals 1. So if I'm graphing the derivative, there should be two zeros, one at x equals negative 2 and one at x equals 1. Now let's take a look at what happens uh, before, in between, and, and after the two zeros on our derivative function. Okay, so let's first look at this part of the graph of our function, uh, the x, where the x values are less than negative 2. So a couple things to notice about this part of the graph. Uh, the function is increasing, which means the slope is positive. And notice also, if we were to compare, say, the tangent line down here versus the tangent line over here, uh, closer to the zero, notice the tangent line is gradually becoming less and less steep, which means the value of the slope is actually decreasing the closer we get to x equals negative 2. So this part of the graph of f that I've highlighted green has a positive slope that is decreasing. Okay, So if I'm going to try to draw a graph of the derivative, uh, because the slope is positive, that means I'm going to be above the x-axis. And because the slope is decreasing, that means the graph of my derivative should be decreasing. So I could start up here and decrease until I get to that point where we already decided that the slope was going to be zero. So the graph of my derivative would start out like this. Okay. All right, now let's look at the next part of the graph of f of x. Let's look at the graph from here to say here. Let's look at this part of the graph. Okay. So this uh, magenta portion of the graph is decreasing, which means the slope is negative. And again, if you kind of compare tangent lines, say comparing the tangent line here versus the tangent line here, uh, it's becoming more and more steep. Now, because the slope is a negative number, more steep means it's decreasing. So we have negative slopes that are actually decreasing. They're becoming more and more negative. Okay, so if I'm going to graph my derivative, the slope is negative, which means below the x-axis, and decreasing. So it's going to decrease until I get almost to the y-axis, but, but not quite. 
Okay, so so far it might look like this. All right, now let's look at the next portion. Let's look at the graph from say here to here, the blue portion of the graph. Slope is still negative, okay, which means I'm going to still be below the x axis. But now we go from a very steep negative slope, and as we get closer and closer to this horizontal tangent, that tangent lines are going to be becoming less and less steep, or in other words, less and less negative. So if the slope is becoming less and less negative, that means it's actually increasing. So for the blue portion of my graph, the slope is negative, but it is increasing. So it's going to be below the x-axis, but it's going to head back up in the positive direction. So it's going to turn back up until we get to this point at x equals 1, where we already decided that the slope was going to be 0. And then the final portion of my graph from that point of horizontal tangency uh, out to infinity, the slope is positive because the function is increasing. And notice the tangent lines are getting more and more steep the further out we go. So for this yellow portion of the graph, the slope is positive and increasing. So if I'm going to graph the derivative, the slope is positive, so I should be above the x-axis. And increasing means I should be well, it means I should be increasing. So the graph of the derivative of this function might look something like this. All right, so let's take a look at this second function, g of x, which again is very similar to f of x, but when I graph the slope, it's going to be, it's going to be different. So let's look at this first part of the function, say from here to here. Notice this is just a straight line, which means its slope is constant. Linear functions have a constant slope. What does it look like when we graph a constant function? Well, the graph of a constant function is a horizontal line. So when I go to graph the slope of this part of the function, it's just going to be a horizontal line. And if we pick two points along here, we can actually compute the slope. Let's look at this point and say this point. It looks like we go up 5, right 1. So the slope of this part of the graph is going to be 5. And this part of the graph stops at x equal negative 2. So from negative infinity to negative 2, it looks like the slope is 5. So that's going to look like this until I get to negative 2. Okay? Now look at the, the second uh, piece of the function. This is also a straight line. Its slope is negative because it's decreasing. Uh, and again, it's constant because it's linear. A linear function has a constant slope. It's just going to be a different constant. And again, if we maybe look at two points, say this point and this point, it looks like we go uh, down 6 over 2. So the slope here is negative 3. If I go down 6 over 2, that would be a slope of negative 3. So between x equal negative 2 and x equal positive 1, my slope is negative 3. So that would look like this. And then the third piece of this function is also linear, which means it has a constant slope. And if I pick out two points, I should be able to compute that slope. Let's look at this point and this point. It looks like we travel up 5 over 1 again. So the slope here is 5. So from here, from x equal 1 out to infinity, my slope is going to be 5. Okay, g of x is made up of three straight lines, which have constant slopes. So when I graph the derivative of this function, it's going to be made up of three horizontal lines. Okay. So even though my two functions were very similar to one another, the derivative functions are very, very different. Okay, now what is that difference? Well, the derivative of f, f prime, is continuous everywhere. Okay, The derivative of g is not continuous everywhere. g prime is continuous except at x equal negative 2 and x equal 1. Okay, this function has two jump discontinuities. We have a discontinuity at x equal negative 2, and we have another discontinuity at x equals 1. So 
Our first derivative function is continuous everywhere. Our second derivative function has two discontinuities. So what does that tell me about the difference between these two functions? The difference here is differentiability. My first function, its derivative was continuous everywhere, which means the original function is differentiable everywhere. Our second function's derivative was continuous everywhere except x equal negative 2 and x equals 1, which means my original function g is differentiable except, except at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So what we can say is that a function f is differentiable at a if f prime is continuous at a. Okay, so if we're trying to determine where a function is di differentiable, there are basically three things we're looking for. Uh, if f has a discontinuity at a, then its derivative is also going to have a discontinuity at a. And that can be proven just using the uh, limit definition of the derivative. Okay, um, again, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at a certain point. So if your function has a discontinuity at that point, it's not going to have uh, a well-defined tangent line there. So if f has a discontinuity at a, it's also not going to be differentiable at a. If f has a corner or a cusp at a, so if your function has a sharp corner at a, or if it has something like this, a cusp at a, so these two functions are continuous that I've, these two sketches I've drawn here are both continuous at A, but they're not differentiable at A. If we were to try to graph the slope of the tangent line of each of these functions, then there would be a sharp discontinuity here at A. The slope changes very abruptly as opposed to a more gradual change in slope. And the third situation, if your original function has a vertical tangent line at A, then it wouldn't be differentiable there at all. So imagine a function that looks something like this. So let's say this was my function, and let's say this is, this is A right here. The tangent line here uh, looks like it would be a, a vertical line. And if you recall, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Uh, remember, slope is rise over run. This particular line here would have no run which means its slope is undefined, which means if we tried to graph the derivative of this function, there would be a discontinuity at A. But as long as you do not have a discontinuity, corner cusp, or vertical tangent line, then your function should be differentiable. So I have two statements here, and I want you to think about whether or not these statements are true or false. And after I read them, I would encourage you to pause this video uh, and think about continuity and differentiability and uh, decide how you would answer these and then you can hit play and I'll you can see if your answers match mine okay the first statement is if f is continuous at a then f is differentiable at a so if your function is continuous does that mean it's also differentiable the second statement is if f is differentiable at a then f is continuous at a so if your function is differentiable, does that definitely mean it's continuous? So pause the video and give me your answers, and then uh, I'll reveal my answers once you hit play. Okay, so let's look at statement one. If f is continuous at a, does that automatically mean f is differentiable at a? And the answer is no. Okay, and this statement is false. Functions can be continuous, but not differentiable. And again, just look at an example like this. Let's say my function uh, looks like this. So let's say f looks like this, like our original function f that we looked like. This function is continuous everywhere, OK? This function is continuous everywhere. We don't have any holes. We don't have any jumps or, uh, or asymptotes or anything like that. This function is continuous everywhere, but it is not differentiable at two points. Okay, it's not differentiable right here, and it's not differentiable 
right there. So continuity does not necessarily mean differentiability. A function can be continuous, but not differentiable. And here's kind of the example to keep in mind. Statement two, if a function is differentiable at A, then is it definitely continuous at A? That is true. Okay. Uh, again, if f is differentiable at a, that means f prime of a exists. Okay. If f is differentiable, if f prime of a exists, that means f of a exists. We can't find the. There's no way to find the uh, evaluate the derivative at a point a if the original function did not exist at point a. Okay. So if f is differentiable at a, then f is definitely continuous at a. That statement is that statement is true. Okay, so hopefully that helped a little bit with this idea of differentiability and uh, graphing the derivative of a function. Have a great day.